Hello students, today we will discuss about the design of beam with point load transfer from secondary beam. Now, this is the plan of a G plus 2 structure and this is the plan of first floor. Now in this plan, today we are going to design beam B7 which is a secondary beam but of course on that beam B7, beam B23 is also transferring a point load. Okay? And Later on, this beam B7 transfers load on these two beams, which is B22 and B24. So today, first we will design B7, then we will transfer the load on beam number B22 and we will design the continuous beam B18 and B22 by moment distribution method. Now, first let us discuss B7 and the, the loads. Now, in this beam B7, since uh, the slab B, S6, S7 and S8, these are the sunk slabs and sunk by 400 mm. So obviously depth of the beam is considered as 500 mm, later on we will see that. So this is S6 is the one way slab, S7 is the one way slab and S8 is the two way slab and S5 also is the one way slab. So when we consider beam number B7, so slab S6 transfers load on the left portion of this B7 and slab S7 transfers load on the right portion of B7 along with the load transfer from slab S8. Okay, now let's start with design of beam B7. Okay, so this is the design of beam B7. Width of the beam is considered as 150 mm since it's a secondary beam. Okay, it's not the part of the main load carrying the frame, main, main the moment resisting frame. Okay, exposure condition here is given as mild exposure and grid of concrete is M20 into 4 on 5. So this is the problem solved by one of our students. Since uh, student always makes some mistakes, in this example we will also see the mistakes, okay. Uh, uh, probable mistakes normally which the students do here, okay. So here is the clear span of that beam, it's uh, 2460 mm along with the width of the supports, left side 230 mm, right side 230 mm, okay. So the design constants are calculated for the materials, yep, CK is equal to 20 Newton per mm square and FY is equal to 4 and 5 Newton per mm square. So the KU max is 0.48 and RU max is 2.76. So let's consider the first step that is dimensions of the beam. Since the width is assume as 150 mm, so depth we'll use thumb rule L by 15 to L by 10. Uh, the range is 179 to 269 mm, which is very less. But since as I told you that that beam supports sunk slab and it is sunk by 400 mm. When it is sunk by 400 mm, so 400 mm sunk plus 100 mm thickness of the slab, so total is 500 mm and that's how though there is not the requirement of the depth but because of sun slab here depth of the beam is provided as 500 mm. So clear cover is 25 mm and 12 mm is the bar diameter okay. So total depth minus clear cover minus half the bar diameter we got here effective span uh, effective depth of the beam as 469 mm okay. Now let's calculate effective span. So L effective is equal to the clear span plus half the width of left support plus half the width of right support that is 2690 or L effective is equal to clear span plus effective depth and out of these two whichever is less. So L effective is 2.69 meter. Now let's go to load calculation. Well here <coughs> the beam supports a brick wall load. So 0 0.15 is the thickness of the brick wall. 18 kN per meter cube is the density of the brick wall and this is height of the brick wall. Now 3.15 is the floor to floor height and minus 0.5 is the depth of the above floor. Now since we are designing first floor beam, so 0.5 is the depth of second floor beam. So this total is 7.15 kN per meter. Now self height of the beam. So this is B means width, D means total depth and DF is thickness of the slab. So from this depth of the beam, thickness of the slab is subtracted. So we got just the projection of the wave which is below and 25 kN per meter cube is the density of the concrete. So self height of the beam is in the form of UDL that is 1.5 kN per meter. Now let's do the load transfer from slab to the beam. So first we'll calculate the dead load. So here W equivalent B dead load. It means this is W equivalent load calculator for the purpose of bending moment okay and that is dead load. So from slab S6 and W equivalent B dead load from slab S7. Now, as I told you that slab S6 is on the left side and slab S7 is on the right side. So, any one slab you consider which provides maximum load. So, here as I written, consider maximum load from slab S6 and S7 because, uh, of course, if you want to design, uh, there is small variation in the load and hence, a uh, little bit approximation is there and that's why maximum load is considered, okay. So, here, I cancel this load and you have to consider only 
this load okay so 3.125 plus 3.619 that is the load transfer from slab s8 plus z8 plus brick wall and total load is 17.568 okay of course there is one mistake okay so which we are highlighted here now similarly for the calculation of lie load we consider w equivalent b lie load from s6 and again you have to apply same rule here out of s6 and s you consider the maximum load okay and this one is cancelled and total is 4.573 of course uh, this one is cancelled, but we will just continue. We just want to understand the calculation part here. Okay, so the same values are continued further. Now here, W max, that means the ultimate UDL is calculated by considering the uh, ultimate load factor, and that is 1.5. So dead load plus dry load, and we got here total load, ultimate UDL as 33.24 kilonewton per meter. Okay. Now next step, just calculate bending moment. Now here is the loading diagram. So uh, a and B are the supports, okay, and uh, this is 8.113 is the uh, shear force VU max transferred by the secondary beam, okay, on this beam B7, and this is the UDL 33.24 which is given here, okay. Now let's calculate the reactions, okay. 97.53 is the react uh, total uh, load, okay, and the reaction is RB is 48.63 and RE is 48.9, okay. Well, so calculate the maximum bending moment is at the point load, okay. Otherwise, you can consider the uh, you can equate shear force to zero, okay, and that is the point load only. Okay? So it is uh, at point load the maximum bending moment is 35.13 kN meter. Okay, now uh, the beam is designed as rectangular section because the sun slab is there on both sides. Okay, so obviously the design is as a rectangular section. So let's calculate the uh, MUR max that is ultimate moment of resistance and that is given by RU max BD square. Okay, uh, substitute the values and we got here 91.06, which is greater than MU. Hence we can design the section as semi reinforced section okay so let's use the equation of ast and calculate area of steel okay so this is the maximum bending moment this is the effective depth okay and we got here steel as 222 mm square okay now let's use the equation of ast minimum 0.85 bd divided by fy substitute the values and we got here 144 mm square okay well so since this value is greater than this value no problem let's continue with this ast value okay so 222 that means we can provide two bars of 12 mm diameter okay so the area of one bar is 113 so two bars is having area 226 mm square now let's uh, give the check for deflection of course not necessary but since this is the step how to give okay we will provide check for deflection so l effective divided by l by d ratio into modification factor so for simply supported beam the l by d ratio is 20 okay and yes to provide is 2 to 6 okay so percentage of the steel which we got as 0.32 percent okay and fs it is 0.58 fi into as required by as to provide it and that value is 236 newton per mm square so from figure number 4 uh, calculate modification factor and that is 1.7 substitute the values and uh, you got the required depth as 79 mm only and whereas the provided is 469 of course it is set okay now let's do the shear design okay so again separate load calculations are required okay in which you calculate dead load as w equivalent yes dead load okay yes stands for shear okay so is the intensity for shear force okay w equivalent yes dead load from slab sc now again you have to consider maximum load either from slab s6 uh, or s7 whichever is maximum that you consider okay so here is the 3.125 okay you have to cancel this one load okay well the same case is again for the lie load okay in case of dead load you have to add brick wall load as well as uh, sulfate in case of lie load simply you just transfer the load okay from slab s yes, uh, it is from slab uh, S6 yes, or S7, yes, which is max, so it is from S6, yes, which is max, and S8, yes, okay, and total is 4.275. So calculate W, ma w max, and that is 1.5, the load, dead load plus light load, and total is 31.67. Okay. Now 8.113 is the point load, which already we are considering the bending moment also, and in while calculating the uh, bit, uh, the shear force calculation also. Okay. Let's calculate the reactions, okay, in the similar way. So here. The reaction at B is 46.52, which is given here 46.52, and RA is 46.78. Okay, and this is the drop because of that point load. Okay, where the shear force is zero. Okay, well, now we'll design the shear design for this left span. Okay, the calculations are shown here for left span. Okay, so view max. Though this is the equation, but this equation is not applicable in this case. Why it's not applicable? Because there is a point load. Okay, so simply you consider view max. That means it is the Maximum shear force at support and already we have calculated that 46.78. Okay, so I had written here 46.78. Okay, now shear resisted by reinforced concrete. That which okay, uh, it's not shear resisted by. Okay, now 
the second part we'll calculate ultimate shear at critical section that is VOD. Okay. Well, well, VOD is equal to nothing but VO max minus W into VS by 2. What is that VS by 2? VS by 2 is the width of the support divided by 2. Okay. Now, uh, why this D is cancelled here? Because for secondary beam, the critical section is considered at the face of the support and that's why not necessary to consider D. Okay. And hence there is a variation in the calculation and we got the corrected value as 44.4 kiloton. Okay. So, 44.4 kiloton is the value of VOD and that is the ultimate shear at critical section. Now let's calculate the minimum allowable ultimate shear. Okay, so it is the notation is V suffix U C max. So U C max is equal to tau U C max BD. Okay, so tau U C max uh, you get from IIS code IIS 456. Okay, so that value is 2.8 for m 20 grade of concrete. Okay, well it is V U C max is 196.98 and uh, kilonewton and which is greater than V U D and therefore it is safe. Okay, next part we'll calculate V U C. What is V U C? It is the ultimate shear carried by reinforced concrete. Okay, and it is given by tau uc bd to get tau uc first we need pt percentage of steel so it is ast provided by bd okay so ast provided is 226 mm square this is b this is d okay and we got here 0.32 okay now by using this value 0.32 okay go to table number 19 of page number 7, uh, 73 and get the value of tau uc and that value is 0.39 newton per mm square so tau uc is the shear stress okay so you see the, if you substitute the values, you got here values, uh, the final VUC value is 27.44 kN. Okay. Next value, it calculate VUSV minimum. Now, VUSV minimum is the shear resisted by minimum stirrups. Okay. And that is given by 0.4 BD. So, 0.4 BD, if you substitute the values, finally, we get here VUSV minimum as 28.14 kN. Okay. Now, uh, just add the values of VUSV plus VUSV and we get here VUR minimum. It is the shear resisted by Reinforced concrete along with minimum stirrups. So, VUC plus VUC minimum and that total value is 55.58. Since VUR minimum is greater than VUD, okay, it is necessary to provide only minimum shear reinforcement. Okay, design shear reinforcement is not necessary. Okay, it means in the zoning of shear reinforcement, zone 1 is absent. Zone 1 is obviously of design shear reinforcement, okay, and which is absent. Okay, so let's calculate minimum shear reinforcement. Okay, so let's provide hash 6 about has six two legged stirrups okay so its area of this two legs is 56.54 mm square okay let's use the equation 0.87 fi into asv divided by 0.4b substitute the values okay one thing you have to remember that this value is 4 and 5 though uh, you are using the steel if you 500 till i score restrict this value to 4 and 5 okay if you use here has eight stirrups then this value will become 104 okay well now for this has six we got here okay the value as 340 mm okay again you have to check what does that check that that value shall not be more than 0.75 d or 300 mm okay well of course uh, if this value is more than uh, 0.75 d or 300 mm then you provide this value so obviously it is more than this hence we'll provide 300 mm okay so the spacing is now 300 mm okay so ls2 uh, how to calculate that spacing? So it is VU max minus VUC by 2 divided by WU. Okay, so VUC, VU, uh, VUC max we got. Okay, uh, VU max we substitute here. Okay, and the distance is 1.04. Okay, well, now uh, since this distance is governed by the nominal shear reinforcement in LS2 and LS3, we are getting same spacing, but till here the calculations are shown. Okay, how to calculate LS3 also. Okay, so zone 3 is of nominal shear reinforcement. And that is 0.75 or 300 mm, and hence it's the same spacing 300 mm. Okay, so what is that LS3? LS3 is VUC by 2 minus 5.609. Okay, so we just I just want to tell you how to do the calculation. Okay, though it is not necessary to calculate LS3 in this case because the spacing is uniform. Okay, so it is VUC by 2 minus 5.609 because this is the uh, the the part of the uh, the SFD. Okay, because of the point load. Okay, and which you have to subtract. Okay, so we get here. The horizontal distance and that is 0.26 okay and that is ls3 or you can use ls3 is equal to l1 uh, uh, l1 by l1 minus ls2 okay what is that l1 it is the distance up to the point of zero shear okay minus 1.04 and that you get 0.26 so either use this method or this method okay well now this is the uh, diagram okay so two of has 12 through bars okay at bottom and two of has 10 bars as an anchor bars okay and since the spacing is uniform throughout okay so it is not necessary to show any zoning here okay but since we have calculated the spacing okay the candidate has shown ls2 ls3 ls3 ls2 just for understanding the distances are shown here okay well so 
this this is the design of the simply supported secondary beam okay now let us start with the design of the continuous beam and that is b18 and b22 okay width of the beam is 230 mm exposure condition is again mild okay so this is b18 and b22 and b7 transfers the point load on this beam b22 okay so the first step design constraint is same as that of the previous example okay dimensions of the beam again as i told you that uh, there is a sunk slab and hence uh, this criteria is not applicable here because of sunk slab directly the depth is considered as 500 mm and the same case is even for span bc depth is considered as 500 mm okay let's go to load calculation okay so brick wall load since this beam carries the load of 230 mm thick wall okay so that's why the width of the uh, wall is considered as 0.23 this is floor to floor height minus depth of the above that means second floor beam okay and 18 is the density of the brick wall okay so total is 10.97 self drop the beam in the similar way it is calculated as and it is 2.3 okay so for span bc also it is the same self right okay now load transfer from slab to the beam okay it is for span ab that means beam b18 okay so dead load w equal and b okay so it is for bending moment purpose b stands for the bending moment purpose okay so load transfer from slab s4 yes and load transfer from slab s5 yes okay this is on the one side of that uh, beam and this is on the other side of the beam okay brick wall load and plus self fit okay the total is 21.95 similarly you have to consider light load also okay and that total is 5.258 okay for a span bc uh, it is w equal and b dead load from slab s5 okay s6 is not necessary to consider okay because there is a uh, the one way slab and this one way slab uh, does not transfer load on this beam okay well so just two slabs you have to consider yes 5 and yes 8 okay plus brick wall load plus self weight okay so 5.1 is the load transfer from slab yes 5 0 is considered from slab yes 6 so no load is transferred from slab yes 6 okay and from slab yes 8 2.75 this is the brick wall load and this is the self weight total is 21.12 okay well Similarly, light load loss calculation also you have to do. Okay. Well, one check you have to provide. Since light load is less than three fourth of the dead load, it is not necessary to consider different load cases. Okay. So this condition is given in given in IS code. Okay. If your dead load exceeds three fourth of uh, sorry, light load exceeds three fourth of dead load, then you have to consider different load cases. That means max, max, minimum, max. Okay, like this. Okay. Well. So yeah, since that condition is not satisfied here, so we'll consider uniform uh, UDL, okay? That means uh, 1.5 dead load plus applied. So no load cases are required here, okay? So for span AB, that value is 40.81. For span BC, it is 39.07, okay? So here is the loading diagram where span AB is subjected to load 40.81 kN meter and span BC is subjected to load 39.07 UDL plus point load, okay? It is acting at distance 1.25 and it is 42. Point Finite, okay. Well, this is the reaction from uh, beam B7. Well, let's consider uh, the moment distribution method. And first step is you have to calculate distribution factors. Okay. So this is the IAB. That means the stiffness is calculated for uh, uh, it's the moment of inertia which is calculated. Okay, for span AB BD cube by 12, and this is for span BD. Again, it is same value. Okay. Now here is the relative stiffness. Okay. Since the farther end is hinge, okay, the stiffness is given as 3 by 4 EI by L. Same case is again for span BC. Okay. And the distribution factors we are getting for member uh, BA, that means B, beam B18 as 0.57. And for span BC, that means beam B22, we are getting distribution factor as 0.43. Okay. Now let's calculate the fixed end moments. Okay. So here fixed end moment WL square by 12, very simple. So 15.21. And for span BC also, it's WL square by 12. But since there is a point load, you have to consider here the fixed end moment due to point load. Okay. Well, so for BC, it is WAB square by L square. And for CB, it is WA square by A square B by L square. Okay. So substitute the values accordingly. Okay. And get the values of uh, both the fixed end moments. Okay. For uh, BC, the value is 43.64. And for span CB, the value is uh, 39.8. Now, this is the moment distribution table so distribution factors are written here okay then this is the correction which is applied here okay since this is the uh, simply supported end which is considered here so the moment is zero okay half the moment is transfer here okay and now the distribution is done here okay and finally we got here the 46.03 is the moment at support b so this is the fixed bmd before redistribution of moment okay 46.03 and this is minus sign okay so 
let's consider 20% distribution of moments okay so reduce the support moment by 20% and is it is multiplied by 0.8 so that value is 36.824 okay so this is the bending moment diagram after redistribution of moments okay now let's determine the reaction since we need to calculate the maximum span moments okay so first reactions due to external loading so here Whatever the external loading is given here, 40.81 is the UDL, here 39.07 is the UDL and this is the point cloud 42.59, okay, for that calculate the reactions, okay, so the reactions are calculated here, then in the second step we will calculate reactions due to fixed end moment, so this is the fixed end moment, okay, 36.824 and because of which just calculate the reaction, okay, so the 36.824 in this, on this support it is 0, okay, so uh, 36.824 minus 0 divided by span gives you the reaction here. See, this is the maximum moment here, the reaction is upward and on the other side, the same reaction but the arrow is downward. The same case is here for the second span also. And just now, according to the signs of the arrows, okay, add or subtract the reactions, okay. So here, 43.15, which is upward and here it is downward, okay. So, the, this part is subtracted from this reaction and we got here 25.74, okay. Now, for support B, left side. This reaction also upward, this reaction also upward and here is the addition, okay. Here also it is the addition, 92.83, here is the subtraction, okay, 61.7. Now, that's the shear force diagram. Well, shear force diagram is required just to uh, uh, understand the point at which the shear force is zero. So, this is the point at, uh, at which shear force is zero because at this point bending moment is maximum, span bending moment is maximum, okay. The same case is again here also, okay. Well, now, so this is the distance x at which shear force is 0, okay. So this is the distance x shear force is 0 and for the next span it is 1.28, okay. Now let's write on the equation of span moment, okay. At distance x just find the maximum span moment and that is 8.117 for span AB and that is 48.72 for span BC. So this is the resultant bending moment diagram. Here uh, 8.117 is the, okay. So this is the span moment okay which is 8.117 for span bc and that is the 48.72 is the span moment for next span okay that is span uh, bc okay this is sorry uh, yeah span bc okay now this is the resultant bending moment diagram whatever the part is high it is cancelled i can we got here bending moment diagram on tension side okay so this is the sagging bending moment for span ab this is the support moment okay at support b and this is the sagging bending moment for span bc now uh, let's calculate point of conduct lecture, okay. So, span AB equate the equation to the 0 and get the values of uh, the points of conduct lecture and which is x is equal to 1.26 meter from support A. Similarly, for the next span, span BC also you calculate, okay, and that is uh, 1.28 from support B or 1.58 meter from support C. This is the calculation, okay, easily you can understand that. Well, now we will calculate the uh, determination of area of main enforcement, okay. So, span AB. So, section is 230 by 500 mm and bending moment is very less, 8.117. Since on one side there is a sunk slab and on other side there is a regular slab, so we can design this uh, beam as a L section, okay. So, let's assume that XU is less than DF, that means neutral axis lies within the flange, okay. And let's calculate BF. So, L0 by 12 plus BW plus 3DF, this is the equation for determination of width of the flange. Now, let's substitute the values and we got here width as 635 mm, okay. Let's calculate the moment of resistance, okay, uh, for the maximum uh, depth of the slab and, okay, so DF is considered, okay, so 0.3 CF CK into BF into DF and that DF is 100 mm, okay. So, D minus 0.42, uh, uh, 0.42 DF again, okay, so substitute the values and we got here 195 which is greater than or MU, that means neutral axis lies within the plane. So, design the section as single reinforced L section. Let's substitute the values and we got very less value of area of steel that is 48 mm square okay well give the check of ast minimum and that is 221 mm square okay so let's since ast minimum is greater than actual ast so you consider ast minimum there and that is 221 okay so let's provide 2 of 12 bars 226 okay is the area of the bars okay now consider span bc and for span bc bending moment is 48.72 again we have to design this as l section so in this case the Width of the flange is 662 mm, okay, and we'll calculate MUR max, and that is 203.52 kN meter, which is greater than MU. So, again, neutral axis lies within the flange, okay, and design the section as single reinforced L section. 
Now in this case, area of the scale is 294 mm square. Okay. AST minimum by using the equation 0.85 BD by F for it is 221 mm square. Okay. And we got here AST 294. So let's provide 2 of 16 through bars. Okay. Well, uh, in this case, you can provide even 2 of 12 plus 1 of 12 curtail bar. Okay. But uh, in this case, uh, uh, let's provide 2 of 16. Okay. And 402 mm square. So support B. Since support B, bending moment is 36.82 per kilometer meter, okay, you have to design it as rectangular section. At support, section is always rectangular section, okay. So, calculate the moment of resistance of a rectangular section and that is 139.63 kilonewton meter, which is greater than MU and hence we can design the beam as singly reinforced section. So, AST is equal to 228 mm square. And AST minimum is 221, okay. So, in this case now, 2 of 12 anchor bars are provided plus 1 of 10 extra bar is provided which is at top. Okay. Well, so this is the distance of that extra bar. Okay. So here is the 0.855 is the point of contact lecture for a plus 0.469 and that is the effect to depth. Okay. So this is the, uh, you can say, uh, theoretical point of curtailment and this is the depth. So we got here APC that means actual point of curtailment. Okay. So this is for the left span. This is for the right span. Okay. So if you add this 1.324 plus 1.749 will get total length of the extra bar. Now check for deflections for span AB. Area required is 221. Area provided is 226. So calculate the FS which is 235. The percentage of the steel is 0.21. Modification factor is 1.69 from figure number 4. Okay. And here again you have to use one equation and that is the equation of width of wave divided by uh, the width of flange and that ratio is 0.36 and we get here reduction factor from figure number 6 so you have to refer figure number 6 of from page number 39 of, of is 456 okay so use modification factor multiplied by reduction factor okay well so this is 58 and required is 469 obviously it is safe okay so similar calculation you have to do for span bc okay so here it is ast required to 228 and uh, ast provided is 402 mm square okay and we got here Modification factor as 2 and reduction factor as 0.825 and required depth is very less that is 0.67 and which is safe. Now important here is the design of shear reinforcement. Okay. So determination of shear force. Okay. So first we'll do loading calculations. Okay. So span AB. So W equivalent shear force dead load from slab S5. W equivalent shear force dead load from slab S4. Similarly, this is uh, Okay, here there is some one mistake here. Actually, it's a lie load must, must be there. W equivalent shear force lie load. Okay, it's not dead load, it is lie load from S5 and this is lie load from S4. Okay, so dead load, lie load from S5 as well as S4. Okay, both the slabs are considering along with brick wall load and self weight and total load is 25.96 kN per meter. Okay, and ultimate load is 38.93. Now, span BC. So, for span BC, again, you calculate similar type of calculations only. The slabs are different. Now, here you have to consider slab S5 and slab S8, okay, along with brick wall load and self weight load that is 25.08 and ultimate load is 37.62 kN per meter, okay. Now, this is the loading diagram, okay. Well, uh, just similar to the uh, calculation of bending moment, again you have to do the calculations for shear force, okay, and here let's calculate fixed moments because the distribution factors are same. Fixed moments are calculated in the same way, only the values are different. Okay, spans are same. Now, this is the moment distribution. Uh, we got here bending moment as 44.74 at support B. Now, calculate the reactions. So, reactions here due to external loading, due to fixed moment, and final reactions. Okay, well, the procedure is same as that of the earlier case. Okay, well, this is the uh, shear force diagram for span AB, and this is the shear force diagram for span BC. Now, Let's do the shear force. So in the table format, this shear design is done. Okay. Well, uh, view max. So it is the reaction. Okay. So span AB is divided again into two parts left span, right span. Span base is again divided into left span and right span. Okay. So left span 20.02 kN is the reaction. Similarly, 62.32 is the reaction at right span. Okay. For each reaction, you have to do shear design. Okay. So that's why four columns are provided here. Okay. Well, so VUD, it is view max minus. Wu into BS by 2 plus D. So that means critical section is considered at distance D, okay, from the face of the support. So here BS by 2 is the width of the support divided by 2 plus D is the effective depth of beam, okay. And just calculate all these values. So these values are 
these are the values of VOD. Okay. Now, VOC max. So, VOC max is tau C max into BD and the values are given here 302 and which is more than these values, it is safe. AST provided. So, for each span separately, you have to calculate AST provided, but of course, it's a tension steel at the critical section. Okay. Each uh, time you have to consider tension steel at the critical section. Okay. Well, calculate PT. So, for 226, for this span, okay, uh, AB, it is 0.21 percentage, it is 0 0.28, 0 0.28, 0 0.37. Then uh, determine the value of tau UC from table number 19, page number 73. Okay. Well, so this is 0.328, similarly 0 0.374. 0.374 and 0.42 newton per mm square is the value of tau UC. So calculate the value of VOC that is the ultimate shear carried by concrete section, reinforced concrete section that is nothing but VOC BD. Okay, and the values are given here 35.38, 40.38, 40.38, and 45.3. Okay, let's calculate VOC minimum that is the shear force carried by minimum stirrups and it is given by 0.4 BD and the value is same. Okay, for all the spans so it is 43.15. Now add VUC plus VUC minimum that gives you VUR minimum. Okay, so for all the span, this value is added. Now, for all the spans, the value of VUR minimum is greater than VUD and therefore it is uh, safe. That means it is not necessary to design shear enforcement, but it is necessary to provide minimum shear enforcement. Okay, means what zone one is absent. Okay, so let's calculate spacing for minimum shear enforcement 0.87 F into ESP divided by 0.4 B. So here again has six bars. Uh, has six two leg stirrups are provided okay and for that the spacing is 220 mm center to center okay now let's calculate the zoning distance ls2 okay so here the equation is u max minus vuc by 2 divided by w okay well 0 0.06 is very very negligible value and hence i had written here absent okay since uh, it's word negligible okay well for others, uh, right side span, we got 1.08. Okay. Now, this equation is not applicable for this span because of that point load. We'll see the calculations. Okay. In the, uh, in this diagram. Okay. Now, for span BC, uh, this is the shear force diagram, 93.51. Okay. And the shear force reduces up to 46.485. Okay. Well, what the equation is, equation is VU max minus VUC by 2, but VUC by 2 is not on this inclined line, it is on this vertical line. Okay. So, whatever the distance you will calculate, you will get the wrong distance. Okay. So, just take care that VUC by 2 is somewhere here. That means from this point to this point, you are having LS2, and from this point to this point, the zone is LS3. Okay. Well, so same thing is done here. Okay. L effective is equal to LS3 is equal to 3.895 that means this point divided by UDL that gives you 0.104 that means we are just finding distance from this point to this point so I did in here LST okay and from this point to this point it is LS2 okay well so that means while calculating these zonings always you consider the position of the point load if the position of the point load is somewhere here okay then obviously you have to consider the point load also in that equation of LS2 okay so likewise from beam to beam, according to the shear force diagram, you have to rewrite the equation for LS1 or LS2 or LS3. Okay. Now, for right span, that means from this point to this point, there is no question of any point load. So, regular equation you can use VU max minus VUC by 2 divided by W. Okay. And you got here 0.91. Okay. This is uh, zone uh, LS2 0.91 and LS3 it is 0.6. Okay. Well, now the same thing is written here 1.25.91. Okay. This is LS2 and LS3. 0 0.104 and 0.6 that is for uh, span BC. Okay, let's go to the diagram. Yes, this is a diagram, a little bit complicated, but just I want to clear the zone only. Okay, so this zone was uh, negligible. So total from this point to this point is LS3. Okay, and again this is LS3 for span AB and this is LS2. Okay, so this is uh, 80 mm, 520, 514. Okay, so this is not 80 mm, this is 1080 mm. Okay, well now for span BC again zone starts from from the center of the support and that is uh, 1250 it is ls2 104 ls3 600 mm ls3 okay and again ls2 is 910 mm okay so for each zone spacing is different okay so here for ls3 the spacing is 300 mm okay again here for ls2 spacing is 220 mm okay the same thing again in this case also well uh, at bottom 2 of 12 through bars are provided at bottom here 2 of 16 bars are provided and this is the 
extra bar which is provided at support B at top. Okay, and again you have to write the distance. Okay, which we have calculated. Now these are the uh, sections. So this is the section one one. This is two two. Okay, well section one one. It's somewhere here. Okay, where two of twelve bars are provided here. Okay, so two of twelve bar. And since it is designed as L beam, so only the one flange is shown with dark lines, and the other side though there is a slab. Okay, but it is not designed as the T section. Okay, hence it is shown by dotted line. Okay, so that's the uh, end of the design. Okay, uh, thank you.